I'm Mike, and this is the Blind Sense Podcast, and this is my co-host, Morris. Hey, Morris. How's it going, brother? Uh, well, now you're the sick one. How's it feel? <laughs> eh, it sucks. Sick sucks, people. Where's that cure disease spell when you need it, right? Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? But uh, <laughs> we... <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> yeah, perfect. for mail and we got mail people thank god it was one of my one of our one of our friends but it's, that's fine we'll take it <clears throat> one of my friends i called her one night and she we i talked to her she was one of my previous my previous gamer friends and she could and she sent her husband to my podcast to watch it and he watched it and he sent us mail so there you go thank you ryan yep <laughs> so we got uh one. Hey, Mike and Morris as well. This is Ryan. I watched the first few podcasts on YouTube this morning. Figured I'd send an email to discuss them since that seems to be what you're hoping to get from it. I guess the biggest thing that I would like to discuss comes up pretty much any time someone mentions 4th edition Dungeons & Dragons. I've come to realize it isn't universally loathed in recent months, which is good since I, actually, uh, I was actually a really big fan of the system, even after having played through 2nd edition AD&D and both versions of 3rd edition. However, there are a lot of people who really don't like it, but the discussion is never held long enough to find out why they don't like it. In the podcast, you said it was basically crap and left it at that. I'd like to know from you guys what specifically about 4th edition turns you off to it. I don't think there's anything wrong with disliking the system. I just have a morbid curiosity about why people dislike the system. And then, to be fair, I I don't loathe the system necessarily. It's just not what I'm looking for in a gaming system. There is some very things about the system. But yeah, I'm, most of all, I prefer the other editions more than I do 4th edition. Because there was some good things about it. I just... I don't know. I I could go on and on and on why I don't like it, and then I can also go on and on about the things I do like about it. But in general, I don't like it. Well, we actually uh, pulled our friends to get some responses Arcane, from them. Yes. Uh, Rob had responded to us saying, I remember disliking it from the first time I playtested it at Origins. My impressions were that they had tried to make D&D &D into an MMO-style game. And that's a very valid point, and it's it's very it's very cookie cutter, I guess is a good terminology for fourth edition. It's like everybody levels up the same. Everybody gets the power at this level. Everybody gets an advanced power at this level, you know, kind of thing. And the only differences between the powers is like, oh, uh, this one does fire damage, and this one does weapon damage. <laughs> This might move you to the left two squares. This one will move you to the right. And that's the problem. It's too... It's very well balanced. But yeah, but... Balanced to the point where they take all the flavor from the classes. It's yeah, so you're all playing different uh, colored same character, basically. Yeah. I'm red mage, you're black mage, you're white mage. You know, you, you basically get all the same powers at the same levels. I'm fighting. I mean, but this might do... A, you know what, this might do a die more damage at this level than the other power. But, you know, it's just... I... I'm fighter mage. <laughs> it's also very... It's based on... And if you don't have minis this game, it's very hard to play 4th edition without minis. I mean, you can still do it, because I, I, I still did it. But it's all based on a mini grid and a grid. You can't, like, narrate, say, oh, yeah, I move up and blah, blah, blah. So well, there's the, that. Yeah, to be fair, I mean, like, uh, Pathfinder, another third edition than that, it really is exactly. meant to be played it's, like a mini, but blah. we never do. Yeah, we never do. Well, it's it, it's easy, also easier with Pathfinder without minis than it was with fourth edition without yeah. minis. 
Well, come to think of it, now playing Dark Eye, I don't think we really. It never felt like we required minis at all. Come no, it didn't feel like it at all to me either. I mean, I've, I've never, I've also never people. seen anybody playing it with minis yet on YouTube. So there you even go. yeah, play I've seen people play testing this sort of thing, and they don't use minis. So, so they, they 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 offer you the opportunity to, to use them if you want to, but you don't necessarily have to. Our other I friend, just, uh, I just heard recently where they were going to do a Kickstarter for Dark Eye Mini. So yeah. Eh. It's probably coming. It's just you, it's not. Well, it's not necessary. Just like everything it's else, I'm sure there's a market for it. But I mean, like the card game, for example, is a vamped up version of the regular game that's easier to play, and that will never require minis. So right, exactly. So uh, our other friend Eric with a K had said uh, he disliked that they stripped magic item buying out of the game. Also felt like you had much less flexibility in ter terms of building. Uh, mechanically unique character. Everyone just has the same powered by different stats. Yeah, that's pretty much... Well, see, with 4th edi edition, they they wanted to make the system less reliant on magic items. Okay, that's a laudable thing. But it also... See, that's one of the things I liked about 3rd edition. Yeah, which third... immediately begs the question for me, is that truly a laudable goal? <laughs> Because, I mean, like, magic, sorcery, and swords, that's what we're supposed to be, you know. And then yeah. you're like, but wait, the the magic's not so important now. <laughs> it would have said it bores me. <laughs> now, I, I, I like the fact that, oh, I should have a, you know, a, a plus six belt of whatever at this level and a plus this at that level. That kind of gets boring, too. I understand that. I wish they would make, oh, you know, give you the point, the choice to use magic items, but, you know what I mean? Eliminate the fact that oh, I have to have a, a belt of dexterity plus six at this level, and I have to have, you know, a plus five sword. Okay, that makes sense. Get rid of the fact that you don't need, but, oh, you can only use two magic items a day in the system. That's, like, that's stupid. I'm sorry, that was the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Now, it made it very easy for, you know, new players to be able to play the game and new GMs to be able to deal with power creep and stuff like that. But then again, it took away a lot of the fun parts of the game. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. Yeah. Well, then our, our last friend who replied to it, Doug, uh, had told us, I think it would have been uh, it would have done well as some sort of war game, but they had to offer it an addition to 3.5. They killed the traditional pen and paper RPG to make a new war game. If they had positioned yep. it as a competitor to Warhammer or similar games and kept running 3.5, I think it would have gone very differently. And that yep. uh, actually is the reason that Pathfinder got started, because there were a bunch of us fans and and game designers too that were like, no, I don't want to give up on 3.5 for this fourth edition think that's the wrong move so Paizo mm -hmm. kind of went off and did their own thing and that's why they 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 had the lion's share of the market for the entire time fourth edition was running pretty much so one of the problems that you run into with that is that you're again with the uh, the cookie cutter and the the changing it like you're telling people to give up on concepts that they've invested in and mm -hmm. that's never and really good too. thing that's the other thing. That fourth edition, they took Feyrun, possibly my favorite, you know, setting of all time, and they blew it up. It was like, oh, we're going to change all this stuff. I'm going to drop an entire continent here. I'm going to remove this entire part of this world over here and put something else there. Just edit. Now, that I bothered me. Vaguely remember this Badly. discussion. Did they seriously drop a continent on another continent? Yes. They did. They dropped a con. They dropped this continent, and it's like all of a sudden, oh, now there's dragonborn in this world, whereas they weren't there before. Now they are there because we dropped a new continent okay. there. Let me call up something here because I do have uh, a PDF here of the player's handbook, so we can right. look at the character races and like. Oh, that's another. That's another. Big you've one got here. dragonborn come up first alphabetically. Um. Okay, 
Yeah. It's kind I, of an interesting yes. race, but it's like... Eh. Well, then you go Dwarf. Then you go uh, Aladdin. Halfling. I'm not sure. Or did they even put Halflings in the first book? I don't even remember. They are in Elf. here. They're after Half Elf. Elf. Elven. Yeah. Um... I, they've got boots on. I can't even see the furry feet, though. You know, I haven't seen too many uh, African American-looking halflings running around before, and they definitely got one of those in the art. Um, Which is cool. That's and then cool. You know, diversity, diversity. Yeah, and it makes sense. Um, then we go to tieflings, and tieflings actually is probably one of the ones you, like that in Dragonborn. I kind of have a an issue with like this is in the core book, and then you go to a player's handbook too. And then we get uh, Deva, which I, gnomes, I think coming in there. Heard of before? They didn't even put gnomes in the in the core in the first yeah, book. Gnomes are in the second book. Yeah, because so, they weren't even a plume. Oh, people don't like gnomes, so we're going to get rid of them. And then it's like, oh, people got pissed off because you got rid of gnomes. Yeah, like <laughs> I understand gnomes are annoying. It's like so are halflings sometimes, but like that's no reason to get rid of them. Um, they got Goliaths in there. I actually like the Goliath because that was one of my favorite races from 3.5. They brought it over to a different, but they, they borked it in fourth edition. So, <laughs> uh, half orcs never really were that main line, but you know, they're one of the, they weren't my thing. People liked them. They weren't my thing. Well, so. I mean, they're even prominent in Pathfinder too. They were kind of like one of the most, the the least respected mainline race that you can play. Yeah. I'm always bothered by which, whatever setting we're in. It always seems like, okay, you can play a half orc but not a full orc. It's like, look, I understand that there will you can be play a full, full orc. It just it's highly not recommended. <laughs> yeah, there will be more disadvantages. I understand that, but I, I it irritates me that they disincentivize you to playing full orc and they're to the point at which it never becomes like a core race that we worry about in the main books. So see, I like full orcs. It's just they're, And I understand why they do it because you need, you need a bad guy. Yeah. But you know, you I need sooner, a bad guy race kind of thing. And it, and sooner it have it, humans can fill that pretty well. <laughs> yeah. I, like, look, I at never, own, look at our own planet. That's pretty much that's self-evident right there. Yeah. You know? huh. But I just, I never really, the orc thing to me is like trying to treat orcs the same as gnolls. Uh, yeah, I can absolutely see why worshippers of Enoku would be something that you don't really, like, those aren't going to be a mainline race for you. But, like, there are no half gnolls running out there that I'm aware of, so. No, it's, uh, let's see, I I don't know. There probably is, but anyway, it's probably a third part. It's probably a third party supplement or something where there's half moles. Just, but, just you know. because, yeah. Well, there you go. But, well, there's half Kender, and nobody wants to do that. So that's what I'm saying. Kender are basically <laughs> the same thing as halflings, just a little more annoying. <laughs> I actually like Kender better than I do halflings. But uh, well, they have a more defined role. Uh, shifters, just because they're in there, and since now I seem to be just listing off races, we may as well. Um, Yep, Shifter was, I don't know, I don't... Kind of look like lion people to me. <laughs> but, they're, uh, they're kind of like based off of lycanthropes, like they're half lycanthropes kind of thing like yeah. that, you know what I mean? So, eh. Then we go into Player Handbook 3 and then we get into the weirder stuff where, uh, going to get the pronunciation wrong, Githzerni or Githz... Uh, whatever. Githzerai? Gets their eye. Yes, there we go. Yes, that I don't, and that's a player. I see. I don't even remember that from the, that one. But yeah, well, it's in the third handbook, so obviously we're sleeping, sweeping that one well, under the rug. Gets their eye was a was a race in, but it was like a powerful race, so you couldn't play it. Because mm-hmm. so it had already had racial hit dice, and that's because it was also Gith Yankee and Gets their eye were the two races. They were the Gith. Yeah, it's just going into the area that I have no expertise in. I'm yeah, be up front. I have a conversation with Aaron someday. You'll you'll get a huge appreciation for it. Okay, yeah. you know what? I probably have had this conversation with him back in college and forgotten about it. <laughs> you you and want the brutal honesty? Were the ancient enemies of the mind flayers? Okay. Yeah. Well, I and know why. Basically... I know which side he's taken in that argument because 
I can't blame him for hating Mind Flayer. I think he like gives Rai. Gith Yankee is a different story because they're a little bit evil, but yeah. yeah. Mm. Gith Yankee were lawful they were like, like lawful creatures that lived in the plane of chaos. But yeah, we've got Minotaurs. I mean yep. pretty much everybody knows what a Minotaur is, at least in concept. Uh Shard Mind that's or I yeah I don't I apparently never looked at the third bowl. <laughs> These are apparently uh, raw psionic energy, barely contained in the body of gle- gle- gleaming crystalline shards that cannot. Oh yeah, that was the book that they did like psychic classes, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wilden or psionic classes or whatever, but yeah. <laughs> Wilden is that's freaky. Anyway, um, I vaguely remember looking over the book. I just never really did much with it. Yeah, and then we get into racial paragon paths, which just says yeah, to me, bunch of bull. <laughs> it's, it's a bunch of bullshit. It's not worth talking about, honestly. But yeah. Um, they, had some, they had some really interesting things with 4th edition. I'll give them that. They did have some cool stuff. To me, like the the it's just, I don't like the I don't like the over overarching system. So to speak. the tieflings were way too prominent all of a sudden, which is something yeah. that apparently carried over into the online games too that I don't understand. Um, other than it's like I'm gonna be edgy. I'm gonna play a tiefling. Yeah, well, that's like the whole Drizzt Drow clone thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's kind of the same thing. It's like I'm it, not like the other ones. <laughs> No one understands me. I'm going to go into the corner and brood. Am I brooding yeah. enough yet? Do you notice me? <laughs> yep. Pretty much us. But, you know, another problem that we had with it, um, or I personally had with it, we were discussing beforehand, was like the fact that a lot of elemental play came into it, and then we started reclassifying your enemies. We started reclassifying... Yeah, reclassifying, like, creature types that have been around in the system forever. And I was like, oh, oh, a succubus that was a demon for 30 years is all of a sudden now a devil. Yeah. And, like, the the rationale for that didn't even make sense to me. Whereas it's like, okay, at first, whenever I was a a new player and and originally being introduced to the D&D system, and they're like, okay, so demons and devils are not the same thing. Um, well, uh, at some point, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know, the two different planes of existence. But as, as I began to rationalize it over the years, it's like, okay, yeah, the Make more sense, yeah. the demons <laughs> are basically just all ruled by emotion and quick relief and, you, you know, whatever they're feeling at the time. So, and, and mostly not nice emotions. So. Yeah, so I mean, like, the succubus would be one of the few kind of exceptions that they're, they're not always pure evil. Like, they, they can uh, slide a little bit on that spectrum, whereas a, a demon who just loves to kill things was probably going to spend his entire existence just killing things. Whereas devils are, on the other hand... It didn't even attack allies or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, just on a whim, whatever feels good at the time, whatever he thinks he's going to win. Yep. Um, versus devils are pretty much, you know, ruled by law. It's all about lawful. That's why you get the contracts. Cold calculating laws. kind of evil. So it's like your devils are plots within plots that they've set for years and got you into a contract and that sort of thing, whereas demons are like, ah, I don't like you anymore, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. So, demons did everything on a whim. It's, one minute they like you, the next minute they don't. They're attacking you. But then to suddenly say, okay, first off, they're in the same plane of existence now. Now, also, everything is elemental. And I can't no, swear to this. No, they didn't do that. They put, they put the elemental planes, the, the abyss, in the elemental planes, I think. So they put the demons in with the elementals. And I don't understand. It just... None well, of I remember sense. one of the things is like even base creatures, as I recall. Now, I, I didn't actually play, so, you know, take this with a grain of salt, guys. But, like, I remember it being, it's like, oh, everything is elemental in some form. Humans to a lesser extent, but they are still elemental creatures. I'm right. like, that's bullshit. That's not how it works. Well, like, put it this way. Okay, when I say angel to you, Morris, what do you think? A winged creature that probably, you know, doesn't have any elemental alignment. 
and the, mostly that serves a good DA, right? One hopes, but you know, I, I do know See, a few things about Spawn mission, comics, dude. They made angels for all the alignments, so you can have an evil angel, which is just stupid to me. So they had those; they're called Aranes, and <laughs> they're falling yeah, from well, grace. That's what I'm saying. They <laughs> they didn't need to take an angel and make it. Oh, it's for all alignments. No, that's so like. Here's, here's two of the real core problems that I think comes closest to, to answering Ryan's question overall. It's like, so first off, you're screwing with things that don't need to be screwed with and changing exactly. them. And then the next problem is that you're taking things that we're all used to and then saying and they, they no longer apply. And like, it's, like, like, it's like taking, oh, uh... The Chevy is now a Ford. No, no. That's that's a good example, Mike, with, with the Demons Devils. That's like saying, okay, now Chevys and Fords are all manufactured the same way in the, in, in the same well, factory. The same yeah. And it's like, no. Because <laughs> those of you that have that... Saying, okay, this Mustang is now a Chevy Mustang. No, it just doesn't work no, that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's drive, exactly. Drive your thing. Ford Charger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it just doesn't. I that that was my biggest problem with the system. It wasn't even the system. It's like changed all the flavor, and it's like all oh, this stuff that we've been, you know, building this system on for the past thirty years is now gone for arbitrary reasons, and it just bothered me. And I was even willing to look overlook that stuff. And I, and I tried playing it. I tried. I played for six months, and I'm like, okay, yeah, man. And I got to this thing. I was like, I was playing this. I converted Savage Tide into Fourth Edition. So I'm playing Savage Tide in Fourth Edition, and where I made it the whole way to Part Four of Savage Tide in Fourth Edition. And we got to this one battle that just would not work in Fourth Edition where these gargoyles attack you on this cliff. And it just, it sucked. It sucked massive ass. And I just, I refused to play 4th edition there ever after. And that was, because it, it just, I couldn't do anything as a DM. I couldn't do anything. Because I was hobbled by the rules to a certain extent. No, I could, you know, change shit. And, you know, so I would say that actually puts a pretty... Hard. Pretty sizable nail in the coffin of what I was going to say uh, when I was was thinking how we would have this conversation is like so like to call up the character sheet here for a minute on screen you've got a pretty standard fare where it's like your character name level all that sort of thing you got your ability scores initiative defenses etc it all kind right. of works the same way as any oh, other system very similar. yes um. And to a certain extent, like what Ryan was saying about still enjoying the system, uh, there's no reason to, to just, you know, throw hate at it other than the sake of people on the Internet got to be edgy and throw that hate. But, I don't hate it. I just don't like it. But like, you know, I, I prefer other systems. What more. I'm saying is a good DM... Uh, this was going to be my argument. A good DM can take whatever the rule set is and give you a good experience. Because it's like the the combat and the story underneath are elements independent of the system that you're working with right. to a certain extent. But the problem is what you just said about converting Savage Tide, Mike, kind of doesn't make this a defensible system. Because if you cannot craft that story in remotely the same way that it just like the system breaks it yep that becomes a problem yeah well like there was this one battle that we did in the savage tide which was the session before the one we quit it legit the battle legitimately took us three and a half hours between two creatures and the party three and a half hours and I was pulling punches so I did not kill them. You it was know, just you can't. It's just and if we'd have done that, if we'd have done that in regular three point five, it had took us fifteen minutes. Yeah. 
that's that's the thing that it was a fun battle because I was because everybody was thinking I was like how the hell do I you know do this and do that it was kind of cool that way it was very tactical it's a very tactical game you have to think tactically which that's the one good thing I can say about it but man does battles take forever in that system which the individual mileage may vary <laughs> I mean, like some in people, general, battles are twice as long as they normally are. Some people might like that. Um, I personally, being an interactiony guy and having it to the point where it's like, if we're in combat, like either I'm a support character or I'm not having very much fun. Like, yeah. See, no thanks. I I I don't mind long battle as long as it keeps my interest. As long as something cool or something funky's going on. Where it's like, oh, you have to do this, do this, and, you know. As long as it's not like, I swing, I miss. I swing, I miss. I swing, I miss. I swing, I miss. And that's a lot of the battle was, I swing, I miss. Mm. Or it was a lot of like, oh, I'm running around trying not to die, so I have to, you know. It was, it was, I don't even, it might not have been three and a half. It was for, it seemed like forever. It was it was a creature I, I also had to build for myself because they did not have this creature because you know fourth edition goes oh let's just throw a bunch of these creatures that we used to have out the window and we're never gonna make stats for them so yeah so I had to make stuff up on my own that yet again is so gonna be so a lot of that was probably my own problem but still it was just uh, it could be but that yet again brings me back to the point of you're throwing stuff out that we were used to having. And right. For, and that's what bothered me. For better or for worse, um, there's there's an absurd analogy to this that I'm actually going to bl- bring Plague of Gripes into because I, I've been binge <laughs> watching. Funny. I've been binge for watching. We understand. <laughs> I've been binge watching his uh, playthroughs of. Um, Dark Souls, like mm-hmm. one, and then he redoes. Uh, Dark Souls 1 because he thought he was going to do a thing on Dark Souls 3 and he hated it. <laughs> All right. But he brings up this thing about uh, how players on the whole, and I think this is regardless of what genre we're talking about, whether we're talking tabletop games, we're talking video games, what have you, there's always this group of players that wants to see new content, even mm. if there was specifically a reason why that content was cut. Uh, and like his... Uh, crazy analogy was he was saying, let's say there's an imaginary character that we included in, in Dark Souls that's named Bumblefuck. And he's just following you around, and he just bumps into you and takes shit from you, and just keeps saying, Bumblefuck, Bumblefuck, <laughs> every time. And there's nothing gained by having him in there other than he's obnoxious, and it actually destroys... Your, the joy that you would get from playing the game. That's his only function. And then they play test it, and then they decide this is not going to work, we're going to take it out. There are still a percentage of the players that if they find out about <coughs> them being in there, will freak out and say, why'd you remove it? More content! And that's the dumb end of that. Right. Yeah. Okay? But this is the, we actually enjoyed it the way it was, and now you told us it doesn't exist anymore and we can't play with it. Like, that, I, w- that I would say is the valid end of that sort of behavior. Like, there, there legitimately has to be decisions that are made by game designers of whether they're going to keep elements or whether they're going to take them away. And I understand that 4th Edition may have had to strip some things out to work with a different system. But when you yeah. start trying to d- destroy established concepts and established monsters, that's when you got to ask yourself some hard questions, like maybe we're not doing the right thing here. Maybe mm-hmm. we should reconsider redesigning this. And I, the one, one of the big things that bothered me the most is they got rid of my favorite outsider race, which was the Eldrin. And they turned them into elves. Oh, this is just a normal elf now. It's an Eldrin. Yeah. Because Eldrins used to look, they used to have the pointy elf ears and stuff. So they, some of them resembled elves in a certain way. So instead of actually just continuing with that, they just 
blew it up and threw out the window. Yeah, and that bothered the shit out of me. One of the things looking at this core book I was trying to make heads or tails of. Because I'm like, Aldrin, well, that's obviously not elves, but... <laughs> it's an elf. Well, it is in this system. It's an elf. It's a high elf kind of thing. And it's like, instead of just going, okay, you have your elves, you have your drow elves, you have your wood elves, you have your, you know, whatever elves. They decided, oh, there's only two elves. There's elves and then there's Eldrin. Because we can't get through a podcast without me doing my crazy tangent. I'm just going to say that Elder Scrolls has trained me now forever to hate High Elves. I'm always sticking with the Wood Elves, man. Because the High Elves <laughs> are always the one that are doing crazy and the world bullshit with their magic. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that's, I think that that's, they took, they took, you know, some of their inspiration off of MMORPGs. So that's in, you know, Doug was, or whoever was completely right when it come down to that sort of thing. <laughs> they, it, they, Pattern it off. Excuse me. <coughs> yeah, I'm cold. <coughs> they patterned it off a wow in a lot of ways. And I'm sorry, I think World of Warcraft just kind of sucks. So I get its appeal, but it's kind of. It's not bad. It's, it's just. Eh. Dude, it's in the same way that people typically scoff at guys who play Flash games. Well, I guess. Flash is on its way now out, so if anybody's right. watching this on an archive and it's like, oh, what the hell is a Flash game? Think a, a web browser-based game where it's you just point and click it and things on the screen. It's relatively simple and uninvolved. So, like, uh, Candy like Crush, Candy around. Crush, which I absolutely hate because, yes. you know, trying to sue people for using Saga in their name that their story is legitimately a Saga. Anyway... Um, that would be yeah. an example of one of these uh, really simple kind of browser type games. And people typically scoff at game players. Who play, oh, you're not hardcore. It's like, well, who cares? It's a game. They're enjoying it. Let them enjoy things. Yeah. But the, it's, there's an element of don't take something that I was enjoying because it was more complex and make it and dumb. dumb it down to <laughs> make everybody else want to like it too. Yeah, I mean, like that. I'm was trying the, to get more people into the system. Well, that was the cardinal if sin. If you dumb the game down to that point, you're going to lose me too. That's the thing. That was the cardinal sin. You're going to lose your game they, base because you decided to dumb it down for new people. I'm sorry, that's stupid. It's like whenever um, Deus Ex was a, a game series that I really liked um, the first game on. The second game got it on PC very clearly made for console, though. And that... Uh, I mean, unlike some people, it's not bad to the point where, like, I pretend that game never right. happened. But it was pretty rough for several reasons. And yeah. that was probably the worst one. It's like, now the interface is suddenly dumbed down for... Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else with 4th edition I don't particularly care for. Um... They reduced a lot of the skills down, which, okay, reducing skills, that's cool. But they, I think they even reduced them too far. That was another thing. They made feats pretty much useless. Um, they made it like, I'm a wizard. I can take Uncanny Dodge as a feat. Mm. So it's like they they blended they blended the classes together so much that there's like no distinction anymore. Like, oh, I, I'm a rogue. I don't get anything different than a fighter because a fighter can take a cannon and evasion too. And so, that part. unless you're like some sort of special super slippery wizard. Like, mm-hmm. wizards should not get uncanny dodge because wizards aren't supposed to be directly in combat. Pretty much, that's what I'm saying. They 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 took a lot of the flavor that was inherent in the classes, and they put them into feats and skills and stuff like that. And it's just like I said, they homogenized everything to the point where, oh, I'm a fighter, I can take uncanny dodge. Oh, I'm a, oh, I'm a wizard, I can take evasion. Oh, oh, you know, just I don't know, it's just stupid shit like that. And that bothered me. They took a lot of the flavor and just threw it out the window. Oh, uh, these classes are just 
you're Rogue. You're the same as the spider, except that your name is Rogue. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. Like I said, you got. I mean, you're 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 maybe the rogue gets less hit points than the fighter, and maybe he's got better reflex defenses than the fighter, and that's the only difference. There's no meaningful difference between the classes, and that's one of the main things I have a problem with. Now, there's things they did. They I like there's things they did well. I thought they did well. Like I like this. I like. The kind of tactical aspect to a certain degree, but they took it to a degree way farther than what they really needed to. Like, I like the skill challenge system. That was kind of cool. But also, it was too easy to succeed on skill challenges, so I don't even know why they bothered. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I heard they kind of fixed some of that stuff later in, like, oh, like, in D&D &D Essentials, which was, like, 4.5, if you want to think about it that way. But it's like, I don't want to buy another book to fix the shit that you fucked up the first time around. So, I... I don't know. Like, I'm a wizard. Oh, I can get... I can either get Meteor Swarm, or I can get Time Stop, but I can't get both. That kind of shit bothers me. I... There's just more choices in third, 3.5, Pathfinder. There's more choices you can pick from. More well, the, variety. At the very least, more meaningful choices that, I mean, like, one of the reasons that uh, I think Dark Eye kind of appeals to all of us so much is, like, even though uh, you can, everybody can use different skills to achieve the same kind of goals, uh, it's still like you you actually it still feels different you're investing in your character so like the thing that i think they were tr you know come to think of it the thing i think they were trying to achieve is kind of what dark eye has done where like you can be whatever you want to be and still achieve the same goals in different ways but the problem is that they their solution to that problem was, as you said, homogenizing it to the point where it's like, well, we're all playing the same character. <laughs> right. This, well, like Dark Eye, you can, you know, you can have five dudes getting together in a room and not a one character will be even close to the next one. Yeah, because they each have different quirks. If, if you did that in fourth edition, the characters would be so similar, it's ridiculous. Except that they're, you know, this has rogue written on a sheet, and this one has wizard. That's the difference. You know, it's just, I don't know. I honestly don't understand 4th edition. I just, I enjoyed playing it when I did play it. Um, it's just, I vastly prefer other systems. Yeah, well... Uh, another analogy that I was throwing out to Mike earlier was it's kind of like software or, you know, operating systems, you know, that yep. there's a bunch of different ones that do vaguely the same thing. And even so, like somebody's going to like Windows and a certain version of Windows. Somebody's going to like Macintosh, yeah. Somebody's going to like Linux. It's just the way that it is. And even within each one, there's different iterations that some you think work better than others. So ultimately, whatever you think you know, is the best for you, there's not really a wrong answer. There's a bunch no. of, there's a bunch of jerk-offs. you like. I, I'm just saying I don't like it. There's a bunch of jerk-offs on the like internet. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to disparage you for liking 4th edition. Let me finish you my like sentence. Or, or, Damn it. Whatever, that's fine. There's a bunch of jerk-offs on the internet that are going to tell you otherwise, but there is no wrong well, answer. Well, that's because they're jerk-offs on the internet, so fuck them. That's what I say. You know, I if wonder... You enjoy it, that's all that matters. I wonder, is there a, an Arch, Arch Linux equivalent... Uh, in the gaming world, because I mean, like, there probably is. Arch Linux, just to get needlessly nerdy on yet again, is a Linux that you compile the kernel in individual pieces for yourself. So it's supposed to be super optimized, but it's also the hardest Linux to set up. To use, so, yeah. So a bunch of these idiots on forums and what have you are like, oh yeah, you're going to install Arch Linux? Yeah. It's like there's no real benefit to making it that difficult. <laughs> 
just saying you can do it that's basically the a reason. lot of it's just bragging rights but yeah the only legitimate reason to use it would be that it would be highly customized to your system but uh it's on the cost benefit analysis it's one of those things it's like yeah i'm never gonna do that yeah yeah i understand and i know that there are systems that i heard something about a physics-based system out there which like the the battles are so involved it takes days to figure out a round it's like no no i'm never gonna do that <laughs> <laughs> i so don't care about that game yeah yeah like i said you can like it or you can hate it it's up to you i don't even hate it i just i just prefer something else and i i don't know is that worse does that make it worse that like the the best praise that we can give it is, I ah, don't really hate it. It's not really worth hating it. <laughs> no, nah, nothing's worth hating. It. There's, <laughs> there's no point in hating something. I mean, there's a lot of things I dislike. Even in Pathfinder, there's things I don't like. You know what I mean? It's oh, like, yeah. Or oh. Dark Eye, there's things I don't like. But overall, I'd like them better than, say, 4th Edition or whatever. Yeah. Honestly, I like earlier editions of Dungeons and Dragons better than fourth edition. So, eh. but also I grew up on first and second edition, so there you go. Well, maybe if I had played my Icewind Dale, I'd know second edition better. But uh, as it stands, it just actually, gets... I think that was Icewind Dale was. Uh, I think that was third edition, actually. Eh, I don't know, dude. I don't know because I didn't I play. Think that it. was one of the first ones that was third edition. Well. The first one was third edition was Pools of Radiance. The second iteration of it, Pools of Darkness, maybe? I don't know. I think I think Icewind Dale was after that, but I'm, yeah, it might have been between that. I'm not sure. I couldn't say. All I know is a friend of mine from high school, Craig, played it a lot, and he kept going on about it, but it wasn't for me. Honestly, <laughs> that, that game had some I, bugs in it. <laughs> honestly, if I take any of the games... Dungeons and Dragons games that I've played, like you know, computer games. I liked. Uh, the hell was it? Throw a ball. That was the second one. Um, can't remember what it's called. Baller's Gate. Mm. Yeah, Baller's that also Gate was a great game. Now it was kind of buggy too, but you know, I... it was still it was fun as hell. It was a great storyline. It was cool. I heard good things about it, but at the time I was more a first-person shooter guy than an isometric D and D player. So there you have it. It was it was a pre. I love that. Game. I was I played the shit out of that game. I loved it. The first one. I never played the second one because you know I went blind and shit before I got to play. But yeah, it was it was. I heard the second one was even better. Well, I never heard a bad word about either one of them, but you know. It, it's just one of those things. You size it up and you size up your wallet and you're like, no, I don't think this one's for me. <laughs> First one was a little buggy. But that might have been just because I had a crappy computer at the time, too. So, you know, I don't even know. Dude, what, we had, I had a computer that had, like, bad sectors on the hard drive, so it kept fucking up with that. Dude, what would drive me nuts is whenever I'd see, like, graphical errors in games, I'm like, oh, is this because I couldn't afford a better computer? And then... I got a better computer a few years later, and it's like, no, it's just the game is broken. <laughs> See, the first, Baldur's Gate, the first one was so, I think I had it, it was all floppies, if I remember correctly. Like, hmm. real floppies, not, you know, three point, you, you know, whatever. You mean those save icons in the corner that the young kids can't identify anymore? Yeah. <laughs> It might, have, it might have been on disc, though. I don't remember, honestly. It's been so long. No, nah, maybe it was disc. <sighs> it would, uh, if it was, uh, it, it was old, uh, or old enough that it would have been on CDs, but it wouldn't have been on floppies anymore, because floppies kind of died out around 95-ish. I was about the time I was playing the game, so 95, 96, 97, somewhere in there. Yeah, it, but even, I, I, even games in 93 one. came on CDs, man. Come on. I think it was on CDs, but I, it's been so long, I don't remember. Because I remember putting games on with floppy disks. I'm just trying to remember if that was the actual ones I did it with, though. You haven't tr truly played a D and d game until you've played it on an Apple II. <laughs> 
<laughs> I played the one of the first D and D games on a Commodore sixty four, <laughs> which was that was Pools of Radiance was the first one. It was like it was like eight bit, <laughs> so it was like looking at an Atari on a fucking computer. <laughs> it was an awesome game though. It was a really awesome game. It's just yeah. Which is funny because uh, later they they actually re released the game on Nintendo. The the original Nintendo pulls a radiance. It was much better on there. But pulls a radiance. It was a Fey Run game, so you know that's why I loved it so much. I think, but yeah. So yeah, since uh, we're we're uh, yeah we're winding down. I think this is probably recording this anyway. Well, I was just going to show the folks at home this uh, these. Screenshots are from Pools of Radiance and then the revamped versions that came up. Yeah. Do a quick image yeah, search. Think Pools of Darkness was one. Pools of Radiance. Yeah, that was a cool. It was an awesome game, honestly. Had a good storyline. That's why I liked it. But yeah. Because back then, graphics sucked. That the, There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They sucked. <laughs> but it was fun. You know, the storyline was the most important thing when graphics suck. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and hell, then you can play some of, on a computer. I mean, come on. Some of that stuff, though, like, if you've ever... I've gone back in retrospect and a lot... Like, Gradius is a good example of this. Like, read the NES manual as an adult. It's like, when you're a five-year-old kid, it's a hell of a difference... Between when you're an adult and like, wow, that's so lame. Did they really print that? <laughs> Gradius. That was a great game, honestly. I love that game. I got my ass handed to me on that game. More that was the one where you won the ship and you were like flying from left yep. to right and shit. Yep. shit. Yep. Yeah, I love that game. I saw like half was half decent at it. I, just I think I only ever made it to like level three. So. Oh, I made it further than that. But, well, <laughs> hey, I was a game player. I wasn't necessarily good. <laughs> Yeah, well, I wasn't necessarily that great at it, but I enjoyed it. But anyways, we probably ought to wrap it up now. Because I think we pretty much covered most of the 4th edition stuff. If anybody else has any other questions, I will be more than happy to answer as best I can. Yeah, we'll get to them. missed anything, did we? I think we... I actually mentioned stuff I liked about 4th edition, so, you know. That's a step in the right direction, I suppose. Yep. So I hope we kind of mostly answered your question, Ryan. You know, if we didn't, yep. obviously just send us another. It's like, you guys should have talked about this. But, you know, we did what we could with our <laughs> our ramblings. Yeah. But I appreciate the, I appreciate the uh, email, honestly. Because, you know, we were getting disparaged because, you know, we were sending this email. Oh, God, <laughs> don't you start again. <laughs> only one. Only one, people. We tell them, tell them we don't need them. <laughs> we don't need you. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All anyways, right, everybody. Um, uh, do we need to shout anything else? Oh, probably going to shout out our next episode, which I think we're going to do a review of the uh, Dark Eye Compendium. Yes, if I can ever actually plan. sit down and finish reading it. But. Well, yeah. <laughs> Oh, we'll do it even if I don't know anything. My, <laughs> how, how does this work? But, I mean, like, the advanced combat, that's that's pretty much the reason why I was like, oh, I'm pledging towards this because I want to know what it is. Yeah, we might actually get a special guest for the next episode, hopefully. Maybe if Kay is up for it. Or any of them. We'll, we'll abduct somebody and make them talk to us. <laughs> yeah, because we're, you know, we need, we need some, we need some flesh, flesh blood, yeah, flesh blood. Fresh blood into the system here. Okay, this is, everybody, I'm completely innocent. This is Mike's side project. You blame the evil wizard, you don't blame the bard. <laughs> you always blame the wizard, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I probably did it. You probably did in that freaking magic tower with all the weird shit. I mean, he's got skulls on his desk. Why the hell does he have skulls on his desk? Who needs that? <laughs> Give me a bluff check, Morris. The theme music used for this podcast, Orc March by Snowflake, featuring Wolf Sebastian and Spinning Merkaba, is available from CC Mixter under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. You can find it at dig.ccmixter.org or find a direct link to it and its license information 
in our Blind Sense podcast descriptions. Hey kids, so back in 1985, which is actually the year of my birth, um, Coke got a great idea. They were going to replace the classic formula that they'd used for generations with a new Coke, and then people flipped out. And they couldn't handle it. And they're like, why did you change it? What did you do? And by about July of that year, Coke was, oh, man, we're sorry. Uh, we're going to bring back Coke as Coke Classic. So if you wonder why you go to this grocery store and your Coke bottle says Classic on it, that's why. And the reason I bring this up is because 4th Edition is like the new Coke and going back to 5th edition is their version of Coke Classic. Like, sorry man, we won't do that again, probably. Anyway, you should still email the podcast, because we'd like more questions like these. So email mike at valantrix at gmail.com. That again is valantrix, spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R-I-X.